Welcome, folks. Tommy O'Brien filling in for my dad, Tom. He's out today, and we'll see where this market goes as we got a little bit of a rebound going on right now. S&P is still negative by five points, but we're about 27, almost 30 points off of the lows we made earlier this morning. Those lows, just when I was getting off the air, things were looking a little bit shaky in the markets as you were down near about 30 points. Right now, S&P is just down single digits. You're right basically where we opened on Sunday night. We have a rollover on the futures going on. So even though you see a spike from the Friday close to the Sunday night futures open, that's a rollover, not indicative of the markets actually trading higher. So we're basically where we opened, um, where we closed on Friday action. s and is off by five. NASDAQ 100, we're off by 64 points. That's about a third of a percent in the red. Dow in positive territory, up about 40 points, one-tenth percent in the positive. Trading at 39,232 in the Russell, negative by 14 right now. And yeah, Bitcoin's having quite a day, quite a month, quite a year. Well, you call it everything, man. We're within $120 of all-time highs you just made about three hours ago. 73,375. You got to take a look at this thing on a daily. It is a rocket ship, man. From October at 26,776, almost a triple bagger. We're up three times that price point, 73,350 right now in Bitcoin. Excuse me, pretty remarkable acceleration. It is not stopping, man. And I mean, you back it up, not to digress too much on Bitcoin. But how about the run, man? In terms of futures getting approved, right? You get a pullback from 50,000 to 40,000, potentially a case of buy the rumor, sell the news in terms of those spot Bitcoin ETFs getting approved. No, that was the buy, 40,000 to 73,000. We'll see where it stops, but it's not stopping yet, man. Volatility, to say the least. You got Ethereum out there as well. Don't cover Ethereum. But how about, how about it? Look at the run this thing is having. Pretty close percentage-wise, you're up over 4,000 for the first time in Ethereum. Ah, no, you were up as high as 4,900 in Ethereum. Okay, interesting. You got to back it up. Ethereum with a much higher high when Bitcoin was peaking out as well. Nonetheless, at about 4,100. Pretty remarkable. All right, back to regular markets, we'll call them. Crude, jumping around as well. Up above $78. Crude up 13 pennies at 78.14. Gold contract up above $4 at 21.89. How about some of those gold equities rocking, man? People getting into that gold contract. If you haven't tried out my dad's gold report, folks, he's got a new issue out today. Uh, check it out at tfnn.com. We'll jump through some of those gold equities later in the hour. You jump over to the 10-year right now, a little bit of negative price action. The 10-year yield sitting just at about 4.1%, 4.1. We're negative by three ticks right now. Excuse me, 111.20. There's your action on the 10-year. We're bouncing a bit off of the lows we made. We jump over to the dollar index this afternoon. Dollar, just chopping around, 102.86. Let's check in on the yen. Got to keep our eye on the yen, man. Quite the acceleration from 150 and change down to 146.93. Chopping around where you were on Friday as well. Expectations that the um, Central Bank of Japan, Bank of Japan, they may be uh, cutting for the first, uh, excuse me, hiking, hiking, right? Got to recalibrate the brain as they go forward. For the first time since 2007, I think, you look at this thing on a longer term basis, a nice triple top up there at about 150, quite a move last week. We'll see what this week has to do with the dollar yen action. And where do we jump to for there? Well, we jump back to yields and what do we have? We have the CPI in focus. Tomorrow morning, 8.30 a.m., CPI in focus, the numbers they're looking for there, okay? You're looking for 0.4% on the headline, 0.3% on the core. That's month over month. So 0.4 on a headline, 0.3 on the core. And then on the year, they're looking for 3.1% on the year and 37 on the core. So even if you go to core, right? Let's just go to core for a second. Tomorrow, 8.30, core consumer price indexes come out for the month of February. The core, you take out food and energy. Now, crude has been chopping around a little bit higher. But nonetheless, you take out food and energy. The numbers they're looking for are core, again, 0.3% on the month, I got them right here on my phone, and 3.7% on the year. And the interesting part about that, right? Now, the Fed prefers the PCE, okay? But nonetheless, they get this number. That's the last economic number they're going to get, the biggest one, ahead of the March 20th meeting. Now, we get PPI later. We get retail sales. We get consumer sentiment, okay? But CPI tomorrow morning is the biggest one for sure. And then we have a Fed meeting nine days from right now on March 20th. 0.3% on a monthly basis and 3.7% year over year, 0.3 times 12 is 3.6. So if you annualize the expected month over month number right now of 
you're pretty close to the year-over-year -year number on the core basis of 3.7. Crude is going to make things a little bit more complex on the headline. That's the reason why they take out crude and, um, crude and food, because their impact on those items, they have less of an impact with their rates in terms of what happens to the price of crude, what happens to the price of food. They can be more volatile because of other circumstances. But nonetheless, it's still a pretty lofty number when you think about it. The kicker, though, of course, is that the Fed right now is sitting at five and a quarter to 5.5 percent, which is a pretty lofty level. And at some point, they're probably going to make the case that, yes, they have room to go. Yes, they have work to be done. But that they don't have to be as high as they are right now to be as restrictive as they need to be. Yeah. Now, you know, you look at Chairman Powell. This one was out here yesterday from Bloomberg. They need just a bit more evidence was the quote out there. Uh, we're not far from it. That's pretty strong words from the chairman in terms of leading the market here. He knows what the market is pricing in. He knows the expectations, the probabilities. March is out the window. He knows that. Nobody expects them to begin cutting in March. But they do expect it in June, and they may even expect it in May. And so when he tells you we're not far off from it, he knows the market thinks it's coming from June. If the, market, um, if the data continues to come in line, we'll see where we go. Now, you look at their policy rates, right? The one thing, you go back to the 80s, right? Look at these peaks. The peaks do not usually last uh, that long. Now, they did last that long in 2008, okay? But they do not last that long, 2005, 2008, whatever the years are, right? They do not last that long, these peaks. Usually the Fed, especially when they go on a hiking cycle to this degree, right? At some point they start easing. doesn't mean they drop off a cliff. I mean, you see, what, the late 80s, early 90s? What did it take? Five years? They were on a cutting cycle there, five full years, but they started from almost 10, right? Nonetheless, we get a little bit more information on March 20th from the chairman. We get the CPI out, 8.30 a.m. tomorrow. And we'll see where we go from there, man. You jump over to NVIDIA. NVIDIA shares right now, 860. Take a look at the 515 minute. You're pushing the lows of the session right now and quite the drop off. I mean, 2.5 billion shares for NVIDIA, folks. You're talking about more than $250 billion in market cap loss just from where this thing was trading on Friday. Pretty remarkable. All right. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back. We'll be talking to our man Steve Rhodes. We'll talk a little bit of market action. We'll be back in three minutes. Don't go away.